Over 80% of viewers are not subscribed, be sure to hit that button if you haven't already. Airbus and Boeing are two leading aircraft manufacturers in the aviation industry. Of course, there are honourable mentions for others, but these two are your leading ones, I think we can all agree there. These commercial airplane makers have enjoyed highs, but also struggled with lows in recent decades. However, one thing that has remained true is each plane maker has at different stages been able to rebuild and rebound from any struggles that they may have faced. Based on yearly data, Airbus is the one that's been outperforming Boeing though for some time. Key catalysts as to why this is happening will always be something people will debate. One of the primary reasons was the fallout from the late 2010 MAX crisis that led to obviously a more profound impact being felt on Boeing as a general plane maker. Others would lean on the side of innovation and how Boeing has lagged in that department. At the same time, some would argue that Boeing's failure to address specific areas of the market has meant that Airbus has been able to move forward uncontested and reap the rewards. When speaking with industry analysts, they'd agree that it's a bit of all of this plus more. So with much of what I just mentioned being negative on Boeing, you would think that you'd be hard pressed to find something to say about Airbus that wouldn't be in the best of light. Well see, the thing is Airbus has just one problem, and it is a rather interesting problem to have. Their success is currently why they can't capitalize on Boeing's continued demise, customers losing faith in the American plane maker's products, and much more. You can look at this as a beautiful problem, or you can look at it as a bit of a missed opportunity. But let me dig deeper into this, shall I? The fact is that Airbus's backlog is pretty solid, and also pretty substantial. But what does that also mean? Well, even with forecasted production increases that you'd hopefully see them meet, several of their aircraft programs are sold out for a long time. If you're a customer that is seeking a new aircraft from Airbus, let's say from the A320 family, you'll be waiting a considerable period. And if you haven't placed that order yet, well, then you're going to be struggling quite substantially. Even leasing can be trying. The problem here is that for some airlines, they can't afford to place an order 10 years in advance, like maybe a more legacy company could. They're more short-term, and as a result, they're forced to look elsewhere for planes that will be available when they require them. That's where Boeing steps into the picture. Airbus's struggle is through really the success that it has enjoyed with aircraft programs that it manages. It's now unable, though, to address growing demand in specific markets, and thus is potentially hurting what it could want regarding market share, orders and more, which would be an even firmer grip than what it already has on some of these markets. When speaking with an industry analyst, it became very clear that Airbus has sold out its A320 line to 2030. It also sees sales extending well beyond that. So this means... Airbus can't provide new planes to customers who want them in a specific time frame, even if those airlines are desperate. So what happens? Well, in steps Boeing. Airlines have no real alternative but to stick with them. Does that mean that Boeing produces bad aircraft? No, absolutely not. Even despite the quality issues, when the MAX is flying, it works very well for airlines. That can't be disputed. But if an airline conducts a study and believes Airbus is better suited to it, but they haven't got their foot in the door, well, that will be detrimental to them and they'll be forced to look elsewhere. That's what in some instances is keeping Boeing in the spot it's in. Airbus is planning a production ramp up across its A320 family. It'll look to target around 75 A320 family planes per month as part of this ramp up, hoping to achieve that by 2026. However, it still needs to improve to meet overall demand levels. We are already seeing new aircraft orders that are placed now, or should I say at the end of 2023, as we haven't had much take place this year thus far, but we see these deliveries commencing sometimes in the early stages of 2030. Now, also, this could play a part as when the airline requires the aircraft and it's getting, say, ahead of the game. But the thing is, in most cases, these airlines don't have a choice and they're looking to acquire these aircraft at the first possible opportunity, and that just so happens to be in the next decade. 
Remember that while the A320 is enjoying considerable success, there are also ongoing studies revolving around how to just succeed the A320 Neo family. While this is a new plane, and the same goes for the LR, and the XLR isn't even flying with customers, you just can't afford not to innovate and be forward thinking in this industry, as you'll risk competitors coming in and snapping up market share, which some would say has happened with Boeing and Airbus swooping in. But see, with substantial pressures already on the European plane maker to fill requirements by customers, it's equally a good problem, but also a bad one to have on another degree. Boeing ultimately performing well in the market is something that is actually good for everyone, as competition will normally increase people's drive to improve. But that isn't happening, and hasn't been the case for some time when you actually analyse how the backlogs have fared against other fundamental orders and deliveries. When a 7379 incurred a door blowout, at the top of this calendar year, there were even more question marks on Boeing as a plane maker. And it very quickly went from just taking a look at the 7379 and, you know, another story on the max, to they broader production practices, which therefore rolls down to every aircraft type that they're producing. This has led some airlines to question where their future lies, and largely the max too. But as what has already been stated across this video, these customers don't have too much wiggle room. If they're after a plane of the same size, if it's not Airbus, there's not really another alternative out there. So they've got to stick with Boeing. The American plane maker has enough time though to get back in the swing of things. As I stated right at the beginning of this video, the one thing we've learned about the industry is the many ups and downs that are present. The thing is, the longer these downs continue, the harder they'll find getting back into the swing of things, which is obviously an understandable stance that some analysts have said based on the current unfolding landscape. While I talk a lot about narrow bodies because these are the best selling aircraft year over year and also where the majority of the deliveries need to come from, wide bodies is actually an area that Boeing has enjoyed a lot of success in. It's something to be proud of, but it's again that narrow body scene that they're really struggling with and with woes continuing from the Max family and two variants that are still uncertified, the end for these difficulties just never seems to be in sight. There's always something else. So Airbus has much opportunity to take even more market share away from Boeing, which it is doing, but there's frankly a limit on what it can achieve. And because of that limit, Boeing is able to swoop in and obtain customers that may have ideally went with Airbus if Airbus could actually take them on. It is an excellent problem because it means Airbus is performing well, but like anyone, if you're running a business, if you work for a company, if you're a salesman, you're, if you're a salesman or woman, you're always hungry for more success. And not being able to capture that because, say, of potential limitations could definitely lead to frustrations emerging. What are your thoughts on the A320 program being so successful that it's sold out until the next decade, and as a result, for companies that are requiring air in the medium term, their only real option in the narrow body field is Boeing, unless they want to go smaller and to Embraer, but in most cases, if they're looking at the A320, they'll look at the 737 family too. You can let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Thanks again for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time for more coverage on the aviation industry.